my father used to recite certain things as soon as he got up. So, there was one sort of a sloka which used to end or begin, I don't remember now. Nityotsavam bhavatyasam. So, that is, every day should be like a festival. Really speaking, there is something of it in, as a part of our culture. And we think that everything that we do is um, sacramental of sorts. Uh, you, and then the other way is that the other day I was writing a sort of a review of Ram, Ramila Tapper's book by somebody. Every time we always say that the Indian people are unhistorical, they don't sort of... A, but then whenever you start a ritual, you have a set of mantras which say in which continent you are from and what time you are in. Of course, all those might be mythological, but then they have already put you on the date path. Yes. That, um, in fact, this Nityotsam Abhityasam is uh, at the part of my head. I know all of us have something to say about the world which is not very pleasant. Things are unhappy, I mean, sort of people fight with each other, they pull each other down. But then, on the whole, if you don't love the world, you can't work, love, sort of make the world any better. But if you are all the time being overcritical about everything, so, that is the thing that happens. I myself am critical about various things. But when you come to the bottom, it is just uh, that being in the world is a celebration of sorts. Santanikasana I am talking about is probably not the place where you are, but a dream place. Mm. It's a place which uh, probably Tagore thought of at one time. And in today's circumstances, Shantaniketan, what Tagore thought of, would be, in my version, he wanted it to be an institute that will train people for a world of peace. So, it should be a sort of a university of peace studies. Tagore wanted that life should be celebrated, and without any reference to ritualistic relationship and worship and things of that kind. Life should be celebrated as nature should be celebrated. So that people through these various festivals, they will come to know each other better and the uh, environment. There are 365 days in the year. <laughs> <laughs> and the kind of paintings I do, I can do one a day. Because I don't do it because then it will become too trite. Mm. The only thing is that, uh, when somebody is as old as I am, yes. well, doing work of this kind is as essential for your living as your breathing. So, well, that happens. That is the age. When you are thinking in terms of your own personal life, there are various mythologies that we live amidst. Mm -hmm. So, for me, many of these little bits and pieces which relate a story, mythological story, to the life around, mm -hmm is a very interesting sort of a trend true that uh, whenever I sit, I doodle. Mm -hmm. I doodle either in, on my sketch pad, I doodle in the mind. So it is happening all the time. Mm -hmm. That is the And these are like that. And really speaking, these are a certain way to a kind of a visual calligraphy of sorts. I mean, you are trying to sort of... Uh, now, that's a thing that I have learned from Shantaniket. Uh, I suppose as you grow older, <laughs> you like to see the world colorful. Mm -hmm. And um, I always remember that he, as you grow older, you remove yourself from the air. There is less of your ego interest in what you see, and you see it exactly what it is. So, when the light shines through the window on the greenery around, it looks almost like a sort of a brocade of sorts, this side. Now, this has been happening for quite a few years. When I did a series of paintings, uh, which uh, are now referred to as the Inayat Khan series, yes. that was that. 
that here I am, like in Ayat Khan, losing the weight of my body away. <laughs> I don't look like that, of course. <laughs> uh, but then um, the world around is wonderful. <laughs>